All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going, team? Here, and this is BXJS live stream. We are continuing with Deno. Uh, so last time we tried to build the platform or investigate the possibility of doing platform as a service, I guess, and we ended up building the uh, platform as a service plugin that well didn't actually do anything, right? Because we actually replicated the default plugin or the test plugin they had. And while digging around Deno later on, I found out that actually they have a proper example of a plugin uh, right there in the folder. It's just not mentioned anywhere in the docs. So if you are watching this and were confused, then you can actually see the proper plugin working um, without all the struggles. And uh, then I went on to talk to the Deno development team, like the core, uh, core team. They have this nice Gitter web chat where you can just talk to them. And I asked them uh, whether what I did was, you know, makes any sense or if, if it's planned and actually ended up after some talk, uh, ended up forking Deno and um, doing, where the hell was it? And actually doing, um, well, two things. One, I actually submitted the pull request to the Deno to try and figure out how it works, to you know, to get acquainted to the code which was nice and everything. And the second thing I did was uh, I've created, um, where the hell, wait a second. Uh, really, no, what was that? Uh, oh, I'm on a wrong rebel, right, okay, <laughs> apologies. Um, so what I did, I created this uh, Deno worker branch um, that I spent actually quite some time doing that, but let me just uh, demonstrate what this actually does. Um, ta -da -da -dum, git. Uh, we want open changes. No, that's not what I want, right? So here's the deal. Basically, uh, I created a separate um, op, as they call it here, right? So right now, those ops are all sort of bundled, um, or I guess. So basically right now it's a bit of a lull all over the place. So ops consist of multiple files. One of them is this Rust file that actually defines what the op does within the Rust side of the Deno. Then you got the JavaScript side that, um, where was it? Wait a second, or was it TypeScript side? We got the Deno worker. So you got, yeah, you got the TypeScript side, which, or JavaScript side, if you prefer, which basically defines the JavaScript interface for that um, op. And then there's basically all the glue code around that integrates it into the way it actually works. So you use this uh, dispatcher that then you know, provides to actually send action sync with args and module that you provide basically in this case. And then you have to implement some sort of interface class extended and all, all, so on, so on and so forth, right? So in this case, I created this uh, very basic op that's, um, well, essentially just spinned up the module with given args and given module. Uh, and what I did within it is I basically took the existing implementation of create worker and state, which creates the main threads uh, with a thread safe global state. This is exactly what happens when you do deno run. And I just adapted it to run, uh, instead of running with a main, you know, as a main thing, I adapted it to run in a separate isolate, which is exactly how the normal workers do. So it still bootstraps the main environment, it still executes the things that you would expect it to. But then instead of uh, running on Tokyo main thread, it just spawns as the separate future, which basically does the whole thing, right? which it actually worked. So I, I made, I managed to create this uh, test thing, which, you know, passes the welcome TS and this actually creates the worker. So if you can see here the codes, it calls the global this dot Deno worker, which I guess probably will be better to expose this as Deno dot Deno worker or something, but it does work. It does spawn additional isolate and it does exactly what I wanted it. Uh, there's two problems. Problem number one, this is all very hacky and this is exten essentially extending the core of Deno to figure, you know, basically with things that shouldn't really be there. And the second thing, once I implemented that, uh, so, okay, here's another uh, reason. So why I implemented this as a fork of Deno is because there's a bunch of APIs that are currently private that you cannot use in the plugins. So even if I would, you know, try to do that within the plugin like we did last time, it actually wouldn't work because there's a bunch of things 
that are used that are not currently exposed to anywhere else but the Deno core itself. So they are completely private. You cannot access them in any way. I think they're planning to change that, but I'm not sure. So basically my um, my question when I came to the Deno chat was like, hey guys, are you actually planning to expose that? And they were like, well, we're actually planning to expose the Deno workers in the way that you just coded. You know, I was like, okay, a lot of wasted time, but that's a good news. So essentially once the roadmap advances and once the um, Deno core team essentially uh, exposes the Deno workers in a way that I've talked about, we would be able to spawn the workers based on isolate. So not, you know, the whole Deno processor or whatever in a nice manner with a nice JavaScript TypeScript API, which is kind of great. So for now, I'll just leave my fork alone um, because again, you know, it, it was a nice exercise in trying to figure out how the hell does Deno works and uh, what exactly you do with that. Uh, but apparently it was uh, pretty much a waste of time. Well, on the other hand, you know, I did a pull request to Deno with uh, minor changes and they have been shipped, which is, um, I guess, a nice plus for me. Okay, anyway, um, coming back to our platform as a service project, I'm just pondering what should we do today? Because uh, as I said, you know, there's no point in sort of continuing it for now, at least the whole like Deno isolate worker thing, because workers are not finished. This was one of the takeaways as well. So uh, the workers, web workers that the Deno has, they are work in progress right now. This is why there was so many issues with them last time. And again, we just have to wait until they're more stable and we can use them. And then the Deno um, isolate workers, again, this is something that is planned. So that I don't see any reason to actually try and implement this myself. And, you know, again, no reason to do that within the plugin. So I've been thinking uh, we could actually try to start uh, the other side of it, right? So the platform as a service is basically something like Exoframe, right? But uh, Exoframe does allow you to uh, execute. So you have a way to deploy simple scripts in, in a fashion that the function as a service or platform as a service would allow you to for a specific thing. So in this case, it's like a simple um, server. Let me try that again. Simple server, right? It takes in a code and just runs it on a given trigger, right? So we can we can we can do the same. So essentially, we could set up the infrastructure for it, and when once the Deno guys finish it, the whole worker and you know Deno workers thing, then we can extend it to actually run the code. And for now, we can do the runners in naive like spawn process way. Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Okay, so I've been thinking, you know, let's try building the uh, server itself first. So let's let's try building a REST API with authentication and authorization in Deno. Um, for that, I'm still going to use the same Deno pass repository that we had, but I'm just going to um, create a new branch called plugin. Uh, let's call it Deno plugin to be specific, and I'm going to push it origin deno plugin. So I'm just going to push it online so that the code is somewhere not lost. And um, then we'll just uh, switch to master and try to actually build a deno server. Yeah, wise indeed, I haven't seen you in quite a while. Happy to see you uh, join us. Okay, so I'm gonna kill the plugin. I don't do we actually need the make file? Uh, that takes a while. I guess there was some compiled stuff in there. Okay, so we can remove uh, some ops, we can remove test. And we can see what do we have here. So right, 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 uh, dynamic import. Yeah, okay, so I can describe this a bit in a few minutes. That's fine. Uh, make file. So we don't need builds for now. We just need run. Uh, deno allow plugins. We don't need allow plugins anymore. We can just uh, do deno main TS for now and then can tweak it later on. Um, hey, Jer blah, blah. Let, me <laughs> let me try that again. Hey, major malfunction. This is a uh, Windows terminal preview. So you can get it right now. Uh, it's it's like an official Microsoft thing is just still in preview and not released yet for everyone, but you can grab it on GitHub. It is amazing and works really, really well. Quite highly recommended. All right, so we are going to be trying to build a server. Um, let's start by figuring out what kind of library we can actually use. So let's see. 
um, server. So we had oak, if I remember correctly, this is what we used last time, I see HTTP. There was something else, a routing library. So there was a simple routing library. Maybe this is enough for us. And there was probably as well something called web, right? So there's ABC, there is Allosaur. Da, 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 and there's Fen. Okay, so we got quite a few. Um, let's go to the repositories and try to figure out which ones of them are most active, I guess. So the Oak has 372 stars, 74 commits, uh, seven contributors, and was updated yesterday, which is uh, pretty great. So who are the contributors? We got, um, I think he's also the contributor to Deno, yes. So this is one of the core contributors to Deno, which is always a good thing to have. Um, then we got Reno. So this is just the routing library, which might be, uh, okay, this is like pattern matching, but not really pattern matching, which eh, yeah, I would prefer like a proper HTTP library. Okay, we got a ABC, which has 146 stars. Uh, it was updated 12 days ago and has four contributors. So this one is winning, so we're gonna kill that. We got Alozar, which is the uh, framework with many decorators. Okay, so this is like very object oriented. I already don't like that. I'm gonna close this. And we got Denofen, a simple framework, which was updated 11 months ago. That has been quite a while. Um, Thank you, Lemchi, for your subscription. Uh, yes, and thanks. Uh, highly appreciate that. Um, okay, continuing to um, look at this stuff. Right, so this was basically, the, there's no other choice but Oak. Uh, I mean, Oak works, why not? Well, let's just go with that, right? Um, if I remember correctly, it, it took inspiration from the core, which is a nice framework. I mean, I wouldn't say it's my favorite one. I still prefer the Fastify Express style. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty good. So let's just go with that. Um, I think we already did the basic server, but uh, let's just, yeah, we can just copy this thing, right? So let's just um, to, to, to create main TS. We're gonna do the TypeScript version because why the hell not? Still probably gonna complain that we have the top level await. Okay, I'm gonna kill the books. I'm gonna, we got the router, we got the gets, just do the um, basic thing. Save that, why are you complaining? Cannot end with TS extension. Okay, this is the uh, TypeScript. It's still kind of weird that the TypeScript complains about the Deno stuff. I'm not sure, not sure why, but you know what, whatever. Let's just gonna ignore that for now. All right, so theoretically that should uh, work. And if we run Deno main TS, that should, okay, first of all, it will tell us that I won't work because I forgot the allow net um, flag, right? Da, 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 allow net, yes, there we go. So I'm just gonna throw it into the make file for now and do make run because it's just easier. It's gonna do make, there we go. So we are now live, which means we should get a server on localhost, was it 8080? It was localhost 8000, right? So we got our thing here, there we go. So we got our server, we got our hello world. Now, um, what do we start with? I guess let's start with basic, authentication. So um, let's create a source folder and say um, auth ts, right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I guess I'm just gonna grab this rotor from here and do export default router, right? So we're just gonna export this auth router. Um, let's, let's rename it. It's gonna be be a bit better right and then so we got this um let's, let's call it home router so it's just going to be our -da -da -da. um let's just call it our home router is basically just going to serve this one thing and uh, what we need to do is we need to import our auth router right um <laughs> from source auth ts. That's one thing that I should not forget. Uh, whoops, I, right, I should not, first of all, I should not forget to use it actually. Uh, so we go routes and whoops, we go allowed methods. Okay, cool. One, like I keep forgetting 
to use the extensions because I'm so used to the Node.js way of that, where you just, you know, why, okay, why is it not, I guess Prettier doesn't work for, is my Prettier broken or what? Prettier and blah, 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 TypeScript, TypeScript React. So that should work, right? Oh, I guess it's, it doesn't work because it has a weight. Is that, is that why? Is the top level a weight what breaks the Prettier right now? No, it doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't replace things for format. Uh, then or run command, what? Why are you? I'm sorry, what? What was the error? <laughs> Wait a second, what happened? Um, I'm guessing there is, I mean, we should theoretically be able to use uh, Deno FMT, right? Okay, and okay, so this, in this case, it actually uses the double quotes, which is perfectly fine. Uh, new emote. <laughs> I mean, I'm still waiting for the artist who I commissioned to do the awesome uh, avatar that I have in the background image to do the emotes for me. So they are coming to Discord server and to Twitch channel at some point. Uh, but anyway, I'm wondering if there is a way to configure, wait a second, Deno. So I would wanna, okay, yeah, this is Deno enabled. Uh, Basically, Deno has the Deno format command in, 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 integrated into it, right? Then it just, just go away. Um, so there should be some way, wait a second, Deno, yes. Auto format and save, yes, please. Okay, cool, uh, let's see. So let's see if that actually does Deno format. Save, no, it doesn't, I guess, because the pre-tier is on. Pre-tier, now create config file. I guess we should disable pre-tier for, okay, that's a bit annoying. Uh, disable for workspace, there we go. Reload required. I guess they just conflict probably, right? So this is, I'm guessing that's what happens, no? That does seem to work as well, interesting. Okay, you know what, that's not a big deal. We could, um, I mean, I could probably just do Okay, we keep the run at the top format. It's gonna be Deno FMT. And I'm just gonna do that, right? Because all we have in this repo right now is our files. Format, formatted zero files. I guess it doesn't support globs. Um, that is a bit annoying, but okay. Can I do that? Will you work? One file, okay, only main TS. Um, Will that work? No, zero. Okay, so I guess you have to, ugh. Okay, so, well, that's that's not very good, but okay. Uh, there's a bunch of issues actually open for the glob supports, including into, I think, Deno format and Deno, um, or was it fetch? So it's probably gonna get there at some point, but okay, for now, that's fine. All right, so we set up this thing. We set up the Awuth routes, um, home routes. And let us implement uh, some basic authentication, right? So we're gonna have a method login and it's gonna be a post and we're gonna have a method register. Now, here's the question. Okay, like for now, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, here's the question. So we cannot really use Node.js modules here, right? Because they are not compatible with Deno so long as they actually use something non-standard. But we can actually use browser modules that are ES modules because we can just import them, right? So um, let me think, uh, ES module, I wanna Google, I wanna ES module that is some database. I remember having like SQLite compiled or something. Let me think for a second. Maybe we could just go with like um, browser JS module um, database. Yeah, maybe some browser based DB like pouch DB or something. Browserify key value storage. I mean, there, there's like, we, we probably does Deno has, um, what do you call it? like local storage or something. Is that a thing? We'll be very curious to see that. So I, they claim that they basically aim to be like 100% compatible with the browser. 
So the question is, um, I owe my note standards, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, here's the question. Let's see. What do you call it? Like local storage. Like this is the stupidest way of doing it, right? Uh, issues. Okay, so I guess it's not there yet. Right, okay. So we don't really have anything like that. Do we have... So this is for some reason closed. Implement in-memory file system, key value storage. So this is, yeah. So I would want something like this essentially, which is super convenient, like index DB or whatever. Uh, okay, so this was suspended. This is why it's closed. Uh, this is a work in progress. I guess it was stale and never finished. Okay, well. <clears throat> web storage APIs. Okay, so basically web storage is not yet in Deno, which is a bit annoying, but it's fine. We could do um, <laughs> ES modules registry. I remember there was some sort of a registry that just, yeah, there we go. There's one, there was something else with that. ES module loader. Mm, okay, we can start with JSPM package manager. Do you have search for packages introduction react is it just literally proxies the all browser support es6 not for production that's perfectly fine with us babel um okay right so it seems like it's literally just proxies the um, mpm which means that any package that would work in the browser should also work for us but that's again ugh, let me think, JS, SQLite. Uh, there was a WebAssembly implementation of SQLite, wasn't there? Which means that it's probably gonna work. SQLite to WebAssembly, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, can we do JS PM? Um, no, PM. What was the URL format? Dev JS PM slash Okay, uh, SQLJS, would that work? Right, okay, so that's actually JSPM core node libs empty path. Okay, so it does rely on a bunch of Node.js libraries, which is not something we actually want in this case. Uh, but I mean, you know what? We could, we could create our own super stupid database because why not? Let's do that. Um, Let's just start with in memory version, right? So it's just gonna be like DB. That's that's our database done. Export defaults DB. Okay. So that you know we don't waste too much time doing that. We could basically dump JSON to the file later on and restore it from file on save and reload. That would be sufficient for now at least. Right, okay, so let's uh go with the registration uh, context. Okay, so first of all, where's oak? Uh, I want body so how does it, how do you i guess context request body or something uh has body headers blah 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 body okay um method resolves the parsed version of request body is that a method on request context request okay so const data is context request body right there we go and in this case, we're going to get login and we're going to get passwords. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to import db from dbts, yes, please. And now we're going to say, okay, db. Uh, okay, so we need a bit more structure to our database. Um, let's call it accounts. It's going to be empty array. And what we're going to do is we're going to say accounts push login and we need hashed password I remember seeing some sort of hashing thing in the deno uh, third party things so hash password and then password is going to be hashed passwords right now we need that hash thing um da -da 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 -dum. there was the deno third party modules there we go Hash, so we got what? We got, okay, that is a lot of fancy mechanisms there. Uh, SHA, there was the Blake thing as well, right? Yeah, Blake, if I remember correctly, Blake to be is the, was it the password hashing thing? Uh, Blake to be, let us Google because I don't remember, hash function. 
Da, 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 da. Blake to be algorithm, Blake to be net. Uh, da, da, da. Hash SHA MD5. Uh, password hashing. Okay, so we actually want a different one. Okay, so let's see. What do we have here? Whoops. Hash. Um, da, da, da. Do not, if not, no, do not use convenience for SHA1256. Murmur hash three, which one do we want actually? So there's argon two. Do we have an argon two for browser implementation? So argon two JS browser. There's gotta be something, right? There we go. Okay, uh, argon two library compiled for the browser runtime. Um, da -da -da. It's a VASM library, which means that we likely can use it. Password, ASD, salt one to three, memory, blah, 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 run WebAssembly. Salt is two shorts. Okay, I guess you want like, I don't know, 10 symbols or something. There we go. Okay, cool. Nice. Uh, okay, so how do we... Uh, is it published on... Argon browser, Argon browser, NPM. I guess we could use npm as well to install it, but I would rather just pull it from the web. Here's a question. What do they have here? Build Vasm. I guess it won't be here. So what if we have like npkg com slash. So what's it called? Uh, Argon browser, right? Or something. Yeah, Argon 2 browser. Okay. I wonder if that will actually work. I mean, in theory, you know, if it's compatible with a browser, we should be able to use it. So we let's navigate that. Come on. Guess nobody ever tried to pull that. So we are gonna, we're gonna see that. Come on. A GS, let's try GSPM. Maybe that works as well. So, um, okay, so we got that. Oh, there we go. Rate exceeded. What do you mean rate exceeded? Oh no, the PKG is broken. Okay, so if we do that, and if we do this, how does this, it still seems too interesting. So it's still, I guess, I guess it's their own polyfills. Is that how it works? You know what, let's just try importing that. Why not? Uh, so we say, okay, import ta -da, from, Okay, so we do that and we import argon2. If I do console log argon, uh, no, not assert, argon2. And now we're just uh, gonna do deno source auth.ts. And internal server error. Okay, I guess, so I guess, wait, that is a problem with JSPM, not, not my code. Right, this is a bit annoying. The fact that there is no like single registry makes it a lot harder to work, you know, with existing things. I guess, I mean, I guess we could just go with, you know, npm and it, and then just do npm install um, argon to browser, right? So theoretically that should, should install it and we should be able to actually use it Where's my node modules? I'm sorry, what? There's the node modules. So for whatever reason, they're not shown. Okay. Um, I mean, I can leave without that. So let's see. Imports argon2 from... Uh, no, right. Oh, whoops. No, 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 no. Ah, what a, what a, <laughs> okay. That is not what I wanted to type, but that's fine. Ah, there we go. Node modules, argon2 browser, dist argon2.js, right, is what we want. Hey, oh my shell, welcome to the stream. All right, uh, let's see if that actually compiles. I am kind of curious. So, blah, blah, blah. Uh, import. Okay, so it tries to import the node.js modules. First question is why it tries to do that? Because it shouldn't this shouldn't it's supposed to be like browser version of library whoops um oh i guess it's like the universal module yeah okay that is but i see the wait a second i saw the web assembly thing there right 
yeah, so we got the VASM file, which obviously is a binary, so whatever. Um, we could try to just run the VASM file. So let me think, Adeno VASM. Let's actually see how do you, how do you run a WebAssembly in Deno? Blah, 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 VASM trim, WebAssembly. Okay, so we compile. We have to read it manually. Or is there a way to load it? Uh, let's, let's just try searching for VASM. There's gotta be some test or something that covers that, right? <laughs> Come on, so obvious. There we go, test VASM. VASM imports, there we go. Okay, uh, add, add imported, add remotes. Sort equal, okay, so you can import stuff directly from WebAssembly if you know what it exports. Um, let's try that. I don't know. Can I import the whole damn thing? <laughs> Would that work? Um, relative import path env not prefixed with blah, blah, imported from, uh, wait, WebAssembly tries to import something else. Okay. I guess that won't fly. You know what? Again, I don't want to waste too much time trying to find the perfect library for hashing. So we might as well just pick uh i don't know cryptographic hash like zip hash or something it will probably work fine for us right so there we go zip hash from that and uh, i guess it just put it somewhere here and then we just do zip hash 24 uh does what does it take key okay message key mac Right, so let's do that. So we got a key. I don't think, what is this encode function from? Okay, sure, we could do that. Uh, all right, how old I am? I, man, you are asking hard questions. Um, 33, I think, probably, maybe. Okay, um, right, you know what, let's just copy the whole thing. But we don't really need to decode, we are fine with one way. You know what, we just take the hash. You know what, let's just go with like the stupidest SHI to uh, 512, which is I know not the safest bet, but whatever, I can live with that. So we can go with this, um, okay. Mac password, we don't need that anymore. And now it's gonna be, yeah, so there we go. So SHA12 key, okay, so we need some sort of a key. Secure key. It's gonna be very secure. <laughs> right, um, so secure key. Message is gonna be passwords. And I probably should abstract that into a hash function. So passwords, ta -da, done, okay. And we just hash password, right? And then we just store that. So you want me to format it like this, right? No, what? Login does not exist. Oh, okay. So it just doesn't, it's a TypeScript stuff. All right. Uh, you look younger. I found you from YouTube. You are epic. Thank you for sharing knowledge. Well, I mean, very welcome. I enjoy doing those kind of streams. So, you know, really glad to hear that you uh, like my stuff. So context response body. Let's uh, just, I guess, just say success. I, I guess we could just send back the login and then say success true right so something like this now here's the thing we have that and it theoretically should register we could also build the um, build the login uh no 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 we want uh, this uh but here in this case we want so we hash the password and then find account so that Account login equals login and account password equals hashed password, right? Const existing accounts and if existing account is indeed there, 
we send success otherwise we send says false error um wrong login or password right so that theoretically this should cover all the things that we want to do if we do make it's going to pull our functions and now we oh uh, whoa, 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 what is going on uh okay so it actually complains because there is no okay i guess you cannot how okay typescript anyone knows typescript how can, how can i make this work properly can i just do like would that work no it still complains the same way right so that's how wow, property does not exist on promise body. Is that like the body here? Not what I think it is. Is it like a separate thing? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the, there probably are tests, right? So we got a request test. Can I make a project where you write production based code? Like at the job to prepare. I mean, I already did the building. Um, like there was the three building courses that are on my YouTube, this is essentially what I did, right? So first one is like the crude app. The second one is the electron app. And the third one is the sort of data ingestion pipeline. So um, if you don't think that's enough, then let me know. Um, we can figure out something else, I guess. Okay, so let's see mock body reader. So um, body, so what do we get away? Oh, okay. Oh, it's a promise. I'm an idiot. Okay. Right, this is what it was trying to tell me. It's a damn promise. And it cannot deconstruct a promise, which makes perfect sense. Right, so uh, would that work? Password does not exist. Okay, so now it's... Would you work? No, you still complain about the same thing. Yes, Crunchyroll Electron is one thing. Uh, I think the very first course I did, the one... Um... um what do you call it? Building products with JavaScript. I think it was literally called that. We are, where I built the CRUD app was a lot more substantial with like a lot more uh, backbone to it, you know, with testing and everything. Oh, so you get a type and you get a value. Okay, so I guess we get the value and then we can destruct the value into the log. There we go. Okay, this is what it wants to see. Okay, right, 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 right. Uh, that should theoretically work. Uh, what can I do to make a code better for job search? I mean, are, are you just a junior developer? Then you make sure it's readable and nice. And basically, you know what testing is, you know what Git is. And that's already better than like half of candidates. Um, ta -da -da, eight thousand. Okay, so we need to send... Um, post request how do you send the post request with curl <laughs> i can never remember this post json yes thank you very much uh okay this looks good enough curl header application yeah yeah there we go okay so we want um register passwords uh okay you know what i'm just gonna no break that New okay, so we application JSON post. We want what did we use? Login, I think, right? Login is gonna be test, password is gonna be one to three. Send it to register. Okay, we're gonna use curl as our testing thing. We just increase the size and failed. Oh, right, because the port is wrong. A thousand and come on, there we go. So it actually. Login test, success true, so we succeeded. Uh, let's try logging in using our data, right? So theoretically that should work as well. Right, it does. And if we type a wrong password, there you go. Okay, so we it actually was a lot easier than I thought it would be, but um, our basic oath system works quite okay. Fresh graduate, I know Git, React, Vue, Electron, and all the regular stuff. That's more than sufficient to get the junior role. So like just, you know, send out your CV, look for the job and find a company that basically picks you up because it, it does take quite a bit of time to find the people who would 
choose you in the same way you choose them, you know. Okay, uh, now here's another deal. Uh, curl is great and all, but that's not really convenient, right? So I know that Deno has, uh, first of all, let's just commit that. Uh, okay, git, oh, whoa, I'm, I'm in the wrong folder. Um, projects, bxj is gonna pass, there we go. Uh, right, first of all, we don't need node modules. We don't need package. We don't need package JSON. Okay, cool, that looks fine basic um, rest api with login registration all right so that will do now let us add some tests because manually testing it with uh, curl is not exactly the best approach right let's have a look i think that so one of the cool parts about deno was that sort of it has all in one tooling and i think it comes with um testing framework integrated do you have time for code review uh, depending on the size of code just you know join our discord server send it my way if i got time i'll just have a look and um it, i mean i will definitely tell you what i think overall if i have more time i'll basically give you a more detailed overview so that's always happy to help okay uh let's see testing testing and tools there we go cargo no that's cargo test right so i want deno tests where is manual bam, bam, bam. i know that there is deno test but deno test yes so how does it work test blah 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 okay so there's our tests all right so we got the testing framework sure let's do that Okay, so we can uh, run if main. Okay, we don't need to. Do we need to? Do, what is this run if main? What does this do? Link into third party codes. Uh, we saw the deno. Da, 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 deno signal. Okay, handle as signals. Deno run, running tests. Okay. Uh, short run tests, test. Okay, how the hell? Okay, so if I just save that, what do I deno test? Okay, so this downloads the testing framework, which um, okay, allow env, sure, there you go. Right access, okay, <laughs> allow right. Right, okay, so it's allow net. All oh, right, because it also wants the net stuff. It actually found them and executed them. Cool, that is pretty great. What sparked your interest in Deno? Well, first of all, it's the next project of uh, Ryan Dahl who did the original Node.js and it sort of is pitched as the logical evolution for Node.js, which you know, after playing around with it, makes perfect sense. So I guess this was the primary reason for it. And it it looks like it looks great so far. I cannot, like looking at that, I cannot wait for it to mature enough to use it instead of what I use Node.js now for, right? Because there's like so much cool tooling in it and so much cool ideas and so little overhead in comparison to Node.js. Like this is one of probably the killer features. Okay, so how do I test it? Create mock server, um, create mock server request, URL body header. Okay, so this is respond body, okay. Request, new requests. Uh, no, okay, this is how do I test? Is there like a, did it a request test? Can I get, is there like a testing section for Oak router? I mean, I guess I could just test the router itself, right? But that sounds silly. Like this is again, one of the parts that I really like about, for example, Fastify, that it basically comes with pre-baked testing um, tooling, right? That you don't have to invent anything, but uh, let's see. So how do we test the router? Uh, empty routes, setup, context next, router, router routes, await, MV, context next undefined. So what is the setup function? Setup function is path and method, creates mock app, 
creates context and creates mock next, whatever that is. So mock next is just a sync next function. Mock context is an object that is app request response and state. So, okay, this is empty router get context router route. What is this? Okay, um, I mean, let's let's try doing that, I guess. So, okay, so we don't care about this, I think, because it doesn't, I think it doesn't matter if we have it or not. Yep, that works perfectly fine. Let me just copy this into the make file. Okay, so now we can just do make test. Right, and now what we want to do is import our auth router from so I should start using auth ts right and now we need to so const they use this mv thing right so it was did it is a top yeah so we kind of want the same thing okay so this setup thing we want I wish they exposed that as a utility so that you don't have to basically copy paste and rewrite the whole damn thing. All stack. I don't really care. Oh, man, how do I do this properly? I could obviously extract those functions from router and expose them. I guess maybe that will be a lot easier to test this way because we don't really care about the router itself rather than the functions, right? Yeah, it's. I, I wish to write the, like I, I tend to write the integration tests a lot more than anything else but in this case it might be easier to write a small unit tests okay so we're gonna export the router and then I'm gonna create two functions that are also gonna be exported and are gonna be used in the router so that we can actually test them which Again, I would prefer to write integration tests, but we're gonna work with whatever we have. Okay. Let me uh, let me do deno fmt source star. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, right, I should export. We need to rewrite the main, so it should be like this now. There we go. Which means that in our test, we can now the OSTS, right? So we can now import login and register. And one test is gonna be login. The other test, uh, I guess the first one should actually be register and the other one should be login. Okay, and what we have to do is, so. Our function is taken in the context that has request body. Okay, so register, um, let's call it register test because otherwise it's gonna foreshadow our register function and nothing's gonna work, which is gonna be unfortunate. Test context, so let's construct our test context. And we're gonna await that. And yeah, right, that's gonna be, a sync, right? This is also needs to be a sync. And then we need to assert equals test context. Um, so we need to assert that basically response body is equals, yep, okay. And then we can do login, let's call it test login. Whoops, test login uh, test. Test login. Uh, yes, absolutely. Do suggest the project ideas. Uh, as I said, you know, feel free to join our Discord server and just chat there. Like people always throw around the things they would be interested in seeing me doing essentially. So I'm, I'm open to that. So response and body is gonna be this. Now, what do we need to fake here? We need to say that the request body is a function Okay, request, uh, whoops, request body is a function, a sync function actually, right? 
that returns a login, which is a test login, password, which is a test password. Okay, uh, we need to create some test passwords. One or three, I'm gonna be very creative here. So do we need anything else? Uh, so we did it, we did DB, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that seems like that should work. And then we can do the, exactly the same thing with login, but instead of calling register, we can just call login here. Uh, and that should theoretically be it, make tests. No, can I read property login of undefined? Uh, what did I do wrong? So, oh, value, right? So it should return, ah, right, 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 right. I forgot, so that should be value. And then we should have our, our proper body. There we go. So this should fix it, right? Okay, cool. There we go. We've added some tests and they actually work. Let us format everything. No, okay. Oh, sorry. That should be TS, right? There we go. Format it. Um, get at get commits at basic auth tests. So cool. So we've added very basic authentication. Now here's the deal, right? We need some protected routes, I guess. Uh, I'm also not convinced that this is a good way of doing that. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change the AUTH a bit. We don't need that anymore. And instead of doing the whole router thing, whoops, that is too much. Instead of doing the whole router thing, so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna say export const setup. It's gonna take router. And then just gonna basically apply our methods to it and return a route, right? So um, let us you know, FMT everything, there we go. Okay, which means that we're gonna get the setup, uh, let's call it setup auth to be a bit more distinct, right? And instead of doing that, so we're gonna have only one router now. Right, and instead of doing that, I'm just gonna say, okay, set up our with router and then we're gonna set up gets, right? So I think that should work. Uh, right, I'm already running it in a different thing. So let me just run my curl commands. Come on, I know you are somewhere here. <laughs> there we go. There's our login, that's wrong. Yeah, okay, so it works perfectly fine. Cool. Um, git commit refactor to have only one router. Now, um, let me see the chat. Is VSL processor and RAM heavy? No, not much. Uh, I mean, so basically the core bottleneck of the VSL right now is the Defender because it tends to scan literally every file you work with, including you know, NPM install or whatever you run. So all those packages are gonna go through the um, Windows Defender, which makes it in incredibly slow. And uh, if, if you disable it, for example, and if you whitelist everything, it's actually quite bearable. Hey Memphis, welcome to the stream. Uh, Commander is not bad. Uh, I personally still like the Windows terminal preview a lot more because it's just super sleek and awesome. But okay, anyway, so here's what I was going to say. We need a middleware so that we can create a protected route, right? Which means that we actually need to uh, not just return something, but set like cookies or whatever. So uh, let me think for a sec. I mean, I guess in this case, we can uh, just tell whatever with cookies, let's just return some sort of a token. Is there a JSON web token thing for Deno? We have a JVT. Yes, we do. So cool. So we can just basically generate the JSON web token and send it back to our client, right? On a login. 
Um, da -da -da, select creation date. All right, um, a JVT. So I think this is what we want, right? We're gonna expand our authentication a bit more. Okay, um, that's probably not gonna fly, right? Um, I'm gonna, ca gonna copy the whole thing here. So what do we have here? We need this stuff, key claims, set expiration. Okay, so you have to set expiration as the parameter here. Now, what is it by default actually, if you don't set it? Set expiration, specific date, one hour from now. Uh, payload, da, 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 da. Additionally, there's a, which simplifies expiring date. Uh, optional explain expiration data, da, da, but not expected. This library checks. If, okay, so I guess you can just omit that. In our case, it's perfectly fine. You can just say we don't care about expiration for now, at least. Okay, we got the header. We got this. Okay, JVT header claim. Then we got encode, whatever that is. And then we got validate. Whoops. So this is basically two things we care about. Da da da. Where's our login? There is our login. If it exists, then we do the JVT header claims. So claims is our login, right? And I think that's basically it. He is, yeah, let's just call it JVT key. So it's going to be JVT key. That is fine. And then um, this one, I'm just going to keep it here. Validate request. Whoops. JVT key false. Okay, so this is what we want to do. We don't, we don't want the header. I guess I should rename the header to J, uh, whoops, no, 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 JVT header. Okay, so here we got, okay, this is hashing. Let's just comment a bit. This is JVT config. All right. Um, <laughs> right, so we send the JVT, all oh, right, I need to send it, JVT. Okay, now, first of all, it's gonna break our tests because there is gonna be a thing. So yeah, so we need to, we need to basically parse. We need to parse the response and then just assert the um, JSON parse. Okay, we need to parse the body, right? And then basically say that result login is equal. Yeah, that's, that's, actually quite much cleaner. I probably should have done this from the beginning. So this is one and the second one is gonna be success supposed to be true. There we go. That's a lot nicer. Should we should do that here as well because why not? Okay, and just do that. So that's gonna make our tests a bit nicer. Right, okay, uh, make test. Uh, no, make, come on, make test. Are we still working? Nope, Vali oh right, okay, because it cannot validate it. So let's do export const validate async request. Just gonna do that. Uh, yeah, right, request, there we go. Okay, so now the test should at least pass. Let me have a look at the chat. Um, da -da -da, what is VSL? VSL is a Windows subsystem for Linux. It basically allows you to, ra uh, to run the Ubuntu kernel, or it's not exactly kernel, it's actually the, uh, if you know Vine, which basically makes you run Windows apps on Linux by translating calls from Linux to Windows, no, the other way around, from Windows app into the Linux calls. VSL does the same, but for Windows, so it literally takes the Linux apps, runs them in a specific environment, and then translates the Linux calls into Windows calls. 
and like 99.5% of the software just works, including, you know, the Z shell, I don't know, Node.js, all Git, all of that stuff is running in, inside of Linux for me. And uh, yes, it is absolutely awesome. And if you are developing this, it makes development on uh, Windows 10 a lot nicer. Okay, uh, I really should figure out how to run the formatting for Deno automatically because something is not working here. But anyway, so we got the tests. Tests are now working, right? So we got the uh, tests passing. They work as expected. So we now have our validates. Uh, it also should be a middleware. So, okay, we don't need that. We need the middleware. Uh, no, I don't, we actually do need the JVT first. So we need what? Um, do, 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 middleware router get. So the router produces middleware, which can be used with an application. Does router support middleware or not? And I say, hey, apply this middleware only to a specific router. Is that a thing I could do? I guess not, right? Um, okay, you know what? That's fine. We could we could just uh, we could do that. We could apply this router, right? So then we could apply middleware. Uh, so this context next, and in this case, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna get context uh, request headers get. Um, what is the header that you usually use for the authentication? Authentication header. Is it just authentication? Basic authentication. There we go. And that's what I want. So why is it so tiny? Da 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 da. Double 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 authentication. Authorization. There we go. Basic. Yeah yeah yeah. So we want authorization header. So and uh, what we need to do is uh, token is gonna be authorization replace so we're gonna get remove bearer from it right with nothing and then we need to so we need our validate thing this actually goes token so what is the the the, the validate example used validate jvt you give request body okay so i guess this is a string right um i guess we can just return token jvt yep that looks fine okay so set up both validate uh yeah let's call it validate jvt and validate token in this case right and in this case, we're gonna say const uh, token valid awaits validate token token here. So if token is valid, we're gonna do next. Otherwise, how do we interrupt the chain? Um, blah, 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 blah. So what if we, I guess we can just return that. Context response body JSON stringify error not authorized. I assume this is how it works. So, and then we're going to create another router, right? Um, let's call it protected router. And then protected router gets protected and then it's just gonna say uh, no wait i am doing the wrong thing i'm just gonna copy this paste it here and it's gonna be hello protected route right and then we just need to plug it in after our protection uh, the middleware that authenticates basically Okay, I have no idea how to test that with uh, the current framework though. So I'll think, oh, I guess authorization, authorization middleware. And then we're just gonna go here, protected 
routes. Do I play video games? Oh yes, I do <laughs> pretty much daily. Okay, so we got that. Um, ta -da -da, let me think. So make, gonna start that. It doesn't fail, that's a good sign. So we are gonna register first. Oh, you know what? We have to return the token on registration as well, right? Because otherwise, uh, I mean, I guess we don't really have to, but uh, let's register and then let's log in. So we should get our JVT. Cool, that actually works. Uh, which means we need to send, let me think. So we need another header. Just gonna say authorization bearer. And then we're gonna put our token in there. And then it's gonna be get, uh, I guess this case doesn't matter. And then it's gonna be protected. So theoretically, if I didn't screw anything up, well, okay, I did screw something up. Um, what is why are oh because I forgot the slash. Okay, right. There we go. And not authorized. So something went wrong. Okay, let's try to figure out what went wrong. Okay, so it says not authorized. Uh, I guess I should return here. Maybe this is why it doesn't work. Maybe because I didn't return early. Is that the case? Yep, there we go. Cool. It actually works. <laughs> Holy crap. That was easier than I expected. <laughs> okay, uh, so what do we have? Um, will the test... Did I think I... No, I didn't break the test. Okay. So, git um, add basic uh, authorization middleware and protected route. Okay, sign the commit. Right, um, I think that might be a good spot to stop for today. So we did, I mean, you know, the basic REST API with login, passwords, uh, registration, authorization, and protected routes. Uh, let's, let's just, you know what? Um, I'm kind of curious if, if the main route still works unprotected. It does, okay. So this, the same, basically the middleware works exactly the same way it does in Koa, Express, whatever, which is kind of good. Okay, so let's go. Like, it's it's a bit. On one hand, it's really great because you know it took us. Like, what I like is that there is no node modules, no nothing like that, right? The tooling is still there's some problems. I should probably actually run Deno FMT on everything. It commits uh, format code. Right, uh, but it's a lot nicer to work with modules in this manner than with NPM. One downside so far was that, like, you know, there is a Deno land where you can search for third party modules, but this catalog is tiny, especially in comparison to NPM, so it's not exactly convenient. Would be nice to have something like NPM, but for Deno, you know, with like a proper search UI and everything, but I'm guessing it's gonna come at some point. Because of course it is. I, in in this case, you don't even have to host anything because it's literally just a catalog of links and metadata, right? Which is kind of great. Uh, it's just, I'm guessing there's so little modules because the way you add them right now is you have to go to the GitHub, edit the database JSON, then submit a pull request. And there's like four pull requests open. I'm guessing some of them, no, actually they don't really add any, fee, any uh, packages. But anyway, you know, that's not exactly convenient. But yeah, it wasn't, uh, was, was a lot easier than I expected. Testing framework works really nice out of the box. The fact that you literally just pull these assertions from the framework is, is awesome. Just, yeah, very easy. I wish Oak had um, like proper tested tooling, uh, testing tooling integrated like the Fastify does, but you know, that's like integration tests. Not a big deal. Um, still kind of cool to see where it is. Uh, hey, Leonid, welcome to the stream. What? You, you are, I'm not sure, like, okay, you know what, whatever. <laughs> okay, um, right, so if you guys have any questions or suggestions, uh, feel free to throw them into the chat right now. If not, we can just wrap it up here. Um, there is gonna be a BXJS weekly 
hundreds episodes of the podcast this Saturday. So make sure not to miss that. There's going to be something um, something happening. I still have no idea what, but I'm going to do something special for this uh, occasion. Other than that, um, usually if you miss the stream, the VOD will be available on Twitch immediately or on YouTube in a few hours. Uh, we have a Discord where you can join and ask me questions and uh, chat with us about JavaScript, TypeScript, Deno, Node.js, whatever the hell you want, or maybe video games. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, you are sick. Well, get well soon, mate. Uh, you know, second week already. Wow, okay, that is that is tough. Can relate. I was uh, sick just a few weeks ago, so it's not the most pleasant thing ever. So get well soon. All right. Anyway, doesn't seem like we got any more questions or suggestions, so I guess that will be it for today. I probably should actually update README. Meanwhile, like you can, you know, still think and um, send me your questions into the chat. I will edit the uh, da -da 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 -da, the thing. So let me think. Da -da -da -da, the worker didn't work. Uh, still vip in deno. So use, okay, so I, I guess I just copy that, add it here. That's added from top down, that makes more sense. Deno native plugin, um, so da -da -dum, didn't work, not enough public APIs. Deno, uh, okay. Deno will expose Deno worker layer on natively. Okay, so this sums it. Our current approach, build the basic REST API with AUTH and everything first. Run code via um, processes migrate to isolates later. There we go. That's, I think, good enough. So we got the Deno land, we got native plugins. We got, um, I probably should add, what did we use today? So we used, we used what? We used Oak, we used DJVT and we used, uh, I think that was it, right? Let me just link those and that's basically it. So we had DJVT, we had Oak. Oh no, we used the hashing thing as well, right? So it was the uh, HMAC, yes. There we go. Okay, uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I guess you do need some sort of a command in Deno that would list all the used packages, right? Because it is a bit inconvenient that you have to go through the whole code to know what the uh, specific project actually uses. JVT lib for deno djvt. I guess it will be better to do it like this, right? Got that, we got oak. Come on. Done. Um, the framework for Deno, and we used HMAC. Whoops, that's the wrong place. So H, uh, I guess hashing lib for Deno. HMAC. There we go. Okay, cool. That's good enough, I think. Update README, and we are basically done for today. Is Deno viable for big projects? Uh, that depends. Like, I think it comes down to the ecosystem. If you don't need anything beyond what the core offers, then even at this point, it's already really stable and you can do some pretty cool things with it. If you do rely on nodes, like, you know, NPM and all the crazy packages that are there in ecosystem, then you will have a hard time trying to replicate that within Deno. So yeah. I miss your cats running in the background. Oh yeah, the new office doesn't have access to, or the cats don't have access to the new office. So they are no longer destroying my stuff. 
But we're probably going to have a cat stream at some point, maybe for the 100th episode of the DXJS Weekly. Let's say, you know, cats, cats are always a good stream material. <laughs> but okay, what? Okay, that was my wife throwing stuff at me. You know what? Cats are no longer running here, but now I'm my wife just throwing stuff at me. Does that, does that count? <laughs> she's, she's probably going to murder me off after I stop this stream. But um, anyway. <laughs> All right, I think that's a good spot to wrap the whole thing up. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this stream. I'll see you on a Saturday or next week for yet another stream. We're gonna figure out how to continue with this. Um, have an awesome rest of the week and I see you next time. Bye.